one of the secrets of being great in the ring was doing, you had to do a match according to your opponent. I mean, I was a wrestler. In fact, Lou Thez said to me once, which was one of the greatest compliments I ever got, he watched me wrestle some guy and he said, Larry, you're the greatest wrestling heel I've ever seen in my life. It was one of the biggest, mm. I still get goosebumps. Wow. I mean, I remember one time Brockwell came up to me and he said, well, after I did a Scott Ledoux thing, he said, Larry, that had to be a shoot. No one can work that good. You know, Harley, you know, I mean, I mean, I've got a couple compliments from Harley Ray's, Bach Winkle, and Luth says that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I, I, did, did, did Puts, you think Putsky got similar Now, Putsky was very limited. He was the yes. Polish power, but people loved him. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't do hardly anything. He could do the Polish hammer thing, but he, you know, he had that look. And I'll tell you a funny story about Putsky. Uh, this is the night I got stabbed. I was wrestling Putsky in Albany. And Putsky was in there, but I just had to limit myself. I, you know, when I wrestled Putsky, I didn't put on abdominal stretches. I didn't take him down. I didn't wrestle him. Okay. I did his style. Right. And, and one of the secrets to be a successful guy in the ring, especially a bad guy, if the guy could wrestle, like when I worked with Backland, we had a, a wrestling kind of match. Mm -hmm. I wrestled Putsky. I worked around his strongman stuff. And it was funny. I'm in Albany, New York with Putsky in him. And, you know, and this is right after the Bruno thing, everybody hated me. Now, but there's always a heckler. There's always, you know, a guy that loved a bad guy, like, like Angle, Kurt Angle. I'm the guy that inspired Angle to become a wrestler. And one guy sitting in the front row, and as I'm wrestling Putsky, the guy is screaming out, Putsky, I went out with your mother, she sucks, you know, and Putsky ignores her. Hey, Putsky, you know, he does something else. Putsky, you know, Putsky ignores him. And we're doing our thing, and all of a sudden the guy says, Hey, Putsky, you're short. Putsky jumped out of the ring and started <laughs> slapping the hell out of this guy. And I took advantage of that because I realized after this, the crowd was going nuts, you know, and I figured, well, the match isn't going to get any more ridiculous than what's going on. So when Putsky came in, I crotched them and just hooked them, you know, kind of cheated, and that started a riot. Because, and then that, that's when I got stabbed in the ass trying to get out. I, I leave the ring, and, <laughs> in those days, I mean, you know, they had, they had cops, they, they didn't have the railing kind of, mm -hmm. you know, but, but people really hated you. I left the ring, as I left the ring, you know, you're trying to get through a bunch of people with, with no railing, so they're, mm -hmm. they're there. I feel this gigantic, you know, punch in the head. Some guy punched me and, you know, boom, and I grabbed the guy, and as I was about to punch him, he, he, he dropped down to his knees. So I kicked him in the face mm -hmm. and knocked him out. And the five cops that were like around me, I don't know why, the five cops grabbed the guy I knocked out <laughs> and they're dragging his body off as they're slapjacking him and he's already out and they left me alone. Now I gotta get through this crowd. So as I start to get, I, I, I feel this metal thing hit me in the head. I look over to hit somebody else. I mean, you have to fight for your life. I look over to hit somebody else. It was like an 80-year-old guy that hit me in the head with a metal crutch. After he hit me in the head with the metal crutch, he lost his balance and he fell over. <coughs> so I started acting crazy, which was the secret of making people in front of you kind of off balance for a second, you know, rah, 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 so they would kind of move out of your way and you could make it through. As I'm doing that, acting crazy and trying to get through, I can see that you know, chairs are falling over people. Old people are under chairs, and hundreds of people are walking over the chairs and over the people under the chairs mm. trying to get to me. I felt someone like, you know, kick me in the ass. But I kept going. You know, I spun around, didn't see nothing, I'm going nuts. I go back, I make it back to the dressing room, you know, and there's still you know, whiskey bottles flying through, Coke bottles flying. I mean, God knows. I get back, you know, Arnold Scullin is sitting there playing cribbage <laughs> like he did every night, you know, with somebody. And he goes, yeah, it sounded great, kid. How'd it go? And I went, no, yeah, it went great. I said, yeah, I think it was some asshole that'll kick me in the ass. It hurt. And I put my hand back here, and I went, what the hell is this? And I pull out a knife blade about yay long. One of those, maybe them little, like, wooden Japanese knives. They had, like, and thin blades. And there. you'd pull the wood apart, yeah. you know. Yeah. And some guy stabbed me in the ass with this thin-bladed wood knife. And when I spun around or whatever, I broke the blade off from the handle. 
So I'm running around. I thought I felt like a Charlie horse. I thought someone just gave me a good kick. Yeah. And when I put my hand back there, I pulled an eye and went, son of a bitch, someone stabbed me in the ass. And all I could hear was going, oh, 15-2, 15-4, 8. I mean, they didn't, you know. It was a, but it, it was something that happened every night. It was no big deal.